Guys, great job. Thank you. Uh, really enjoyed this film. <laughs> Last night, I thought it was just a fun ride for all of us at, at the screening. Um, how challenging was it to make this film for you both? Because there were a lot of physical aspects on, on your part, yes? No, not really. I did, I, it was, oh, he tries not to be so physical. Yeah. It, your it, character. Stallone has to carry that weight. Right. You know? <laughs> Um, but I just remember it just being a lot of fun, you know, mm -hmm. being in New Orleans and being around these icons and you know, castmates. It was, uh, yeah, there wasn't really anything challenging. I mean, we're playing pretend. I mean, it, it's pretty easy. It could be worse, right? It could be worse, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. I do like your character a lot. She's so cool and so hip. Um, She's much cooler than I could ever be, <laughs> than I could ever be. Um, Curious, when you started out, you know, your acting career, could you ever imagine that someday you would play Sylvester Stallone's daughter? Oh God, no! I never <laughs> thought I would be sitting here right now talking to you about what that's like. No, you know, I mean, as you know, as an actor, you know, it's just, I mean, yeah, you you get used to hearing no more than you get used to hearing yes, mm -hmm. and and you know, on this project for me at least, when I went into audition, the character was a blues singer. And then I found out that they were interested in me. They wanted me to go back again. But then this time they changed it to a tattoo artist. So now mm. she's a tattoo artist. And then I found out that it may not go any further with me because now they're thinking about casting somebody older and it's going to be Stallone's girlfriend. And then they were like, well, maybe we want Sarah, but then that's going to look weird having the two of them be girlfriend, boyfriend. So maybe <laughs> it's going to be Stallone's daughter and we'll still hire Sarah. So, it, it, again, it's like I was prepared for this not to work out for me because... Oh. There were so many, it was such a roller coaster ride from the moment I went in. And, um, you know, I was, again, I was, I was fully expecting to hear no. Mm -hmm. So every time they kept calling me back in, it kept calling me back in. I was like, well, this is just a game at this point. I don't know what they want with me. And um, how long was that process for you? That process for me lasted probably like a month and a half. Are you serious? Yeah, that's a long wow. time. So a month yeah. and a half of not sleeping. Well, no, I, I, have, I had, a, at the time, my child was two, so I crash every chance I get, you know. But, um, but yeah, it was definitely very up and down, and, like, I would, I would go in, and then a week would go by without hearing anything. Mm -hmm. So then I'd put the project out of my head, focus on something else, and then mm -hmm. it's like, oh, remember that movie you went in for? And at one point, the movie was called Headshot. That's right. Yeah, oh. and so it was, you know, the project Headshot. And um, so, yeah, I was fully prepared not to get it. So then after I met Stallone... And uh, he was kind of the, the final say. You know, I had to meet him. And if he liked me, then I was, they had all my audition tapes. So they were all watching the tapes. And, you know, if he, if he approved, I was in. And, um, you know, to get Sylvester Stallone's approval and then to be working with him was just, uh, it was something I never quite got over. Right, right. Yeah. Sung, I recently watched an interview of Mr. Sylvester Stallone's, and he referred to your character as idiotic idealistic cop, so would you agree to that comment, or how would you define your character? Well, I think in, in Jimmy Bobo's eyes, he is this idiotic, <laughs> idealistic cop. I think the fact that he's a cop, he's idiotic, and right. definitely this guy is idealistic. Mm -hmm. You know, I, he lives by a self-imposed code. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, mm -hmm. everything is black and white. Mm -hmm. And then when he's next to Jimmy Bobo, he learns that you know, there is a gray area of what is good and bad, you know, not only in work, but also just as a man, mm -hmm. right? So um, I think that's what makes that chemistry unique and entertaining and yeah. funny, you know, because um, he comes from an older perspective of seeing the world. The very, 70s and the yeah, 80s, very right? Very very <laughs> right. what's on the mind, and boom, I'm in Very blunt. Yeah, where, you know, J Taylor's characters, everything is, probably I'll look at Google and see if it's politically incorrect <laughs> or not before. Anything comes out of my mouth, you know. So that's his weapon right there. It's a cell phone, yeah. not guns or anything yeah. else. Which right. is necessarily not a good thing at the end of the day, because mm -hmm. you realize that instead of living life through a phone, you live life through the experiences, you know. And Jimmy Bobo teaches him that. So I had to ask you both uh, for this year's Super Bowl. Who do you guys predict will win the Super Bowl? Ravens or 49ers? <laughs> Oh God! You are chilly or so. Come on, like, yes, uh, you should know. <laughs> oh my God, what? Have wait, you been following the, yeah. No, the two I'm so bad. Coach brothers, pick one. My excuse is that I have a three and a half year old son. Um, Ravens are who? San Francisco 49ers? Is, are, are the two teams going right? to go against yeah. Yeah. San Francisco? Yeah. Yeah, 49ers and Ravens. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, the coaches are brothers. I'm so. gonna yeah, let it go. Yeah. Oh, they're brothers. Uh -huh. Oh my god, that's so amazing. I know. <laughs> that's why it's gonna be so fun wow. to watch. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm only gonna say San Francisco because Colin I'm, Kaepernick. Huh? <laughs> no, the quarterback. I said Colin Kaepernick. Oh, I, you <laughs> no. know so much. Look at you. I just no. know Eli Manning and who's it? Peyton Manning. But I know. I was rooting for Eli. Yeah. No. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna say San Francisco only because they're in California. Good. Good. How about you? I can't answer that Kelsey question because after the Niners <laughs> took out Atlanta, where I'm from, Georgia. Sorry, I'm still sorry. Hurt. I'm devastated. <laughs> we were this close. I know, I know. Sorry. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ravens for you. Ravens for me. Just oh, yeah. out of default. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good to know. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Hội trợ Tết .com Hội trợ Tết .com Tổng hội sinh viên Việt Nam miền Nam Cali hân hạnh tổ chức Hội Tết sinh viên năm thứ 32 vào 3 ngày 8, 9 và 10 tháng 2 năm 2013 tại công viên Golden Grove. Để đón chào năm quý vị và những ngày lễ sắp đến, Hội trợ Tết năm nay đã được thay đổi bán đồ và có những giá đặc biệt cho quý vị nào muốn đặt giao hàng sớm hoặc bảo trợ cho những công việc làm của Tổng hội sinh viên. Để biết thêm chi tiết, xin vào trang nhà hội trợ Tết .com hoặc liên lạc 714-890-1418 890-1418 890-1418 